Hello, I'm Jennifer Lau, Acting Vice President for our Lower Susquehanna Synod. Today, I will share with you an overview of what to expect as a voting member at Synod Assembly. I know the first time I attended a Synod Assembly, it was somewhat overwhelming. I didn't fully understand what was going on. I hope I can better prepare you for participating as a voting member. After this presentation, you will have time to ask questions. It may be helpful to make a note of any questions you may have for our question and answer time. So let's get started. So what exactly is Synod Assembly? We've heard of it. Some people may have already attended it who are listening here, but it also may be your first time to be a voting member at Synod Assembly. The first question to consider is why do we have Synod Assembly? Well, the Assembly asks, acts as the highest legislative authority for our Synod. The major priorities of the Assembly are worship, edification, and the legislative business of the Synod. Our goal is to conduct the Assembly with the greatest possible involvement of those entitled to participate. And Synod Assembly is required by our Synod Constitution. In 2021, what's going on here? The theme is encountering Jesus. We will celebrate the presence of God in and through our congregations, our conferences, and our synod. The business of the assembly will begin the evening of Friday, June 4th, and conclude at the end of the day on Saturday, June 5th. Our edification days are May 8th and May 22nd. Our assembly is totally online this year. It's been a challenge, taken a lot of planning by our dedicated synod staff and our assembly planning committee. The business agenda includes worship, adoption of the 2022 budget, voting on memorials and resolutions, and elections for synod vice president, synod treasurer, synod council, committees, and representatives to the 2022 Churchwide Assembly. So you might wonder how Synod Assembly is conducted. We have rules of procedure for the Assembly that outline how the Assembly will be run. These rules focus on debate, the chair recognizing speakers, there's rules about amending the budget and presenting memorials and resolutions. And the assembly actually votes to adopt those rules of procedure at the start of the first meeting. Those rules are pertinent to the way business will be conducted at this Senate assembly. We also follow Robert's rules of order, which are often referred to as a parliamentary procedure. These rules ensure a meeting is conducted in an orderly fashion, and that people don't all talk at once, and that there is a method for introducing action to the group. People make a motion, there's a second to the motion, there's discussion, and there's a vote. Robert's rules include a lot more than that. So we have a parliamentarian for Synod Assembly who ensures that all the rules are followed and answers questions relating to correct procedures. Our bishop chairs the assembly. Uh, we have an uh, agenda that outlines timelines in the business that will be covered during assembly. And the only people who may vote are voting members. And voting members are ordained ministers of word and sacrament and word of service under call in our synod. There are voting lay members that have been selected by each congregation to participate in our Synod Assembly. Synod Council members may vote, Synod officers vote, and retired rostered ministers and rostered ministers on leave from call in the Synod may also vote. I spoke earlier about memorials and resolutions, and this is one of the things that very much confused me 
the first time that I went to Synod Assembly. So a memorial requests action with regard to broad policy and is directed from the Synod Assembly to the church-wide assembly. An example here involves um, the Synod memorializing the church-wide assembly to adopt the English Standard Version of the Bible as a translation used for worship in Synod's church-wide organization and its publication. So our Synod asked that of the ELCA church-wide assembly. A resolution has a narrower focus with specific action on the synod level. An example here is be it resolved that the Lower Susquehanna Synod and Assembly designate the second Sunday in February as Outdoor Ministry Sunday to promote the synod camping programs. So you can see that this is, a, is something that came from people in our synod and are, is directed to the Synod. Memorials and resolutions may come from two or more persons, from conferences, or from congregations. And they are submitted to the Synod Secretary, who then decides which committee should receive them. Uh, there's a Committee on Reference and Council that handles resolutions, and there's a Committee on Memorials that handles, guess what, memorials. We're having elections this year. Uh, and this year is unusual in that we are filling terms of office that were filled temporarily because we did not have Senate Assembly in 2020. So we are having an election for vice president, for treasurer, and for Senate council. And you can see here that we're electing people whose terms expire at different times. And that is because we had people who were appointed to serve from 2020 to 2021. Um, you can see we're electing Senate Council members who are ordained, who are lay people, and we are electing a youth member. We do have a youth member on our Senate Council and also a young adult member. We're also electing voting members to attend churchwide assembly in 2022. And we're electing members of the consultation committee and the discipline committee. So ELCA churchwide assembly, you often see it abbreviated as CWA, convenes triennially and is the primary decision-making body of the church. Over the course of the assembly, voting members hear reports and review the work of churchwide officers, leaders, and units, receive and consider proposals from synod assemblies, those memorials that we mentioned earlier, elect officers, board members, and other leaders as specified in the constitution or bylaws, establish ELCA churchwide policy, worship together, adopt a budget and conduct other business related to the ELCA churchwide organization. Because this churchwide assembly is attended by people throughout the ELCA. So it is a huge gathering of people from all across the country. And there is so much work and business that is done there. It's very similar function wise to what we do at our Senate Assembly, only on a different scale. So we're choosing voting members and alternates for CWA, Churchwide Assembly. And we need alternates in case the people that are elected voting members are unable to attend. Um, we always elect representatives for churchwide at the Senate Assembly the year before a churchwide assembly. That gives um, plenty of time for people to make plans and adjust their calendars so that they could go to churchwide assembly in August of 2022. There are procedures set down by the ELCA about electing voting members and alternates. And for each churchwide assembly, 
the bishop and vice president of the synod and voting members as determined by the ELCA plus alternates are elected. The formula for election is set by our governing documents. Um, if you're interested in seeing those, they are in our synod constitution. Nominations include representatives from each conference and nominations include a youth representative who's not yet 18 years old at the time of election and a young adult representative aged 18 to 30 at the time of election. We strive to have nominees that include at least 10% persons of color and or persons whose primary language is other than English. Back to the consultation committee. This committee, whose members are elected by Synod Assembly, functions as an extension of the office of the bishop for purposes of adjudication when conflicts arise and there, or there's a need for discipline. Uh, there are two ways it functions, as a vehicle of appeal and mediation, when there is a disagreement among factions within a congregation on a substantive issue that cannot be resolved, and in an advisory capacity to the bishop during the disciplinary process for ministers of word and sacrament and word and service. Again, members are elected by synod assembly and this year we are electing three pastors and two lay persons. The discipline committee. The members of this committee may be called to participate in a hearing if discipline charges are brought against a rostered leader, a lay leader, or a congregation of the synod. And members of this committee may be called to serve at a particular hearing, along with selected members of the church-wide discipline committee, to listen to the testimony of the accused and the accuser and render a decision, much like a jury does in, when you watch those legal proceedings courtrooms. Again, these are members we are electing, and this year they are two pastors and two laypersons. In addition to the discipline committee and the consultation committee, there are a wide variety of committees in our synod. Just compiling this list uh, put me in, in awe of the amount of, of work that is done in committee and by committees to help our synod move ahead and, and do God's work. Uh, you can find in your bulletin of reports, which was available on the website, reports from all of these committees that I listed here. There are so many, I'm not gonna read them all to you. Um, the first, the committees of Synod Council are appointed by Synod Council at the recommendation of the Bishop. And those committees listed there are committees that even you can serve on if you would like to. We're always looking for people to help with different committee functions. The only one that's not open um, to just anyone is the executive committee, which includes the Synod officers and a vice chair and two at large members who are members of Synod Council and are elected by council members. We also have committees of the ministerium. Um, you can see that some are appointed by Synod Council upon recommendation of the Bishop. The consultation and discipline committee members are elected by the Synod Assembly, as we discussed. There are conferences within our Synod and those conferences are made up of um, churches within specific geographic areas. And each of those conferences has a dean and a secretary. And those deans and secretaries are elected by the, by the, the um, churches in that conference. There, are, there is also a mutual ministry committee that's appointed by the executive committee of Synod Council. That's one that is just not open for, for um, wide participation. We have committees for mission. 
you can see people are get on those committees different ways, either appointed by city council upon recommendation of the bishop or appointed by the bishop. Um, you will see that there's a bishop election evaluation task force, which is a short-term task force that has been working to prepare for our next bishop's election, which is in 2025, but it's a lot of work getting ready for that. So we want to be prepared. More committees for mission. Um, there are a variety of projects here. It's, it's really amazing to look on all that's done here. Uh, there's the Lower Susquehanna Synod Mission Fund, uh, takes grants, evaluates them, and those grant requests come from our congregations to establish new mission or work toward new ministries. And even through pandemic, those requests have continued to come in. We have relief projects, education and mission support, synod worship toward racial justice task force, and world hunger. And there are special synod ministries for congregational life. Bafa Beta Christos is led by Beth Martini, who's assistant to the bishop. And this is for rostered leaders in their first call. There's a leadership support team, a transforming ministry team, and a youth ministry team, all appointed by the bishop. As I said, you can read more information and more in-depth reports about what those committees and different projects have accomplished over the past year in the Bulletin of Reports. It's a lot of information, but we are the Lower Susquehanna Synod. We're the hungrier fed as we have been fed by Christ. Thank you so much for participating in Synod Assembly and for your service. We are so happy when many people can come together and can work together to serve the church. God walks with us every step of the way. And we thank him and praise him for the wonderful things he has done. Thank you so much. I'll be with you shortly for questions and answers. Thank you.